Welcome everybody to the Morganize podcast. So for people who don't know me, my name's Morgan Harper. I'm a Columbus native, Columbus, Ohio, for folks who don't know that. Maybe this is not even the right podcast for you, but that's okay. And I've run for office a couple of times. I'm a lawyer. I'm a, a public policy advocate. And the same reason that I found myself running for office is why we are doing this podcast. It's actually what the whole Morganize thing is about in the first place. Until we recognize that politics is impacting us, that we're taking control of our experience in politics, politics will take control of us. And so we need to be informed and we need to know what is going on. And even though right now we are living in this era with TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, so much access to information, in some ways, it's actually more challenging than ever to know the truth, which seems like it should be simple, but it is definitely not. And we're going to unpack all of that. And right now, I actually am optimistic. And people might look at me, and in fact, they do sometimes, like, Morgan, how could you possibly think that there is anything to be optimistic about right now? But I know that when people come together and understand just the power that we have and have that knowledge, we can take back power in our government to make it work for us. So we are going to be t breaking down a bunch of different issues along the way throughout this podcast. I'm really excited to kick it off because we're at a, we're at a critical point. And things could get worse for sure, but recognizing that we need to know what's happening, getting this information is going to put us on a path to a better future together. So I'm excited to go on this journey with you all. I'm excited that you're joining and it's going to be fun. So let's go. So we are right now a few days away from the midterm elections. Midterm elections, that's a term that gets thrown around a lot. All that it really means is that this is not when a president is up for election. That's when there's a ton of attention about voting. And you probably have a lot of people who are you know, passing out information when you go to the store, or when you look outside your house in the mail. But midterms are the off cycle. It's not as much attention. There's not as much money in it. And that's just when people like to slip things through that they're hoping we don't know about. And so with just a few days to go, wanted to take some time to make sure that you know about a couple really important things that are going to be on the ballot. You've probably heard about the Senate race, the gubernatorial race. That means, you know, the governor, somebody that is running against Mike DeWine, the current governor. Her name's Nan Whaley. We got Tim Ryan versus J.D. Vance. There's a lot of national attention on those, but there tends to be a lot less attention on these things called issue, ballot initiative issues. And like I said, we've got two on the ballot this year, and I want to make sure you know everything about those so you go into voting, not just doing your civic duty because your grandma made you do it, because you feel guilty, because you think it's the right thing to do, but you actually go in with a vision of how your vote is going to make a difference and how you're going to make sure that your vote reflects what you truly believe in. Because if you don't know that, then there's no point in voting at all. So you've probably seen a ton of ads about all of these high profile statewide races. We've got a Senate race. We've got the governor's race, lots of commercials. I'm not going to talk much about those. You already know or you don't know or you don't care or you have your view. And I am probably not going to convince you in this 20 minute podcast. But what I do want to make sure you know is information about something that nobody is talking about. And these are the ballot initiatives that we are going to be voting for. They're called issues, and there are two of them that every single person in Ohio has the opportunity to decide on what our Constitution is going to look like after these midterm elections. So how do you get to the point of having one of these ballot initiatives? Well, it depends on who you are. If you're one of us, just a regular person living in Ohio, well, then you need to get 1,000 of your friends and their signatures and make sure that they are registered voters in Ohio and then get the certification of the attorney general of the state of Ohio to then say that this is a valid effort to pursue as a ballot initiative. And then you get the pleasure of finding over 400,000 other Ohioans who agree with you and will sign a piece of paper in such a way that it's easy to read and make sure that the Secretary of State is okay with your ballot initiative. You could probably guess how many people have time for that. Not a lot. Now, if you are a sitting member of our illustrious state legislature, then actually, and you only need to get a majority of those people to agree to have a ballot initiative, and then you get a ballot initiative. So that's actually how we got these two ballot initiatives. It was not a movement of a, a citizen movement of people across Ohio. It was because people in our state legislature, specifically Republicans, decided that they wanted two ballot initiatives in this midterm election. And we are going to take them one by one. The first is called issue one. 
That's not its official name. The official name is actually, and I brought, I looked these up on the Secretary of State website. You can too, but again, who has time for that? I do, so that's why I'm doing the work for you. To require courts to consider factors like public safety when setting the amount of bail. That's issue one. Very long title. What does it mean? It's a joint resolution of the General Assembly. Like I just said, this was not a citizen movement. This was people in the state legislature that decided they wanted this on the ballot. We're going to get into later why I think that they probably wanted this, but that's not where we're going to start. We're going to start with the language. A majority yes is necessary for the amendment to pass. So that just means of all the millions of people who are likely to vote in this midterm election in Ohio, November 8th, if more of them say yes to this versus no, this becomes the law of Ohio. It will now be language in our constitution. Many people will show up to vote and have no idea what these issues are about. It doesn't matter. You press yes on this, then you are part of potentially changing the constitutional language of Ohio. You vote no, the language stays as it is. So it says to amend section nine of article one of the constitution. We're gonna get back to what the existing language is, but let's start with what they're proposing to change it to. And again, with the state legislature, i.e. that supermajority that has been gerrymandering and ignoring the law, this is what they think the law should be, new laws that they're proposing. Okay, great. Require Ohio courts when setting the amount of bail to consider public safety. There's that term again, public safety. They keep saying that. Including the seriousness of the offense as well as a person's criminal record, the likelihood a person will return to court, and any other factor the Ohio General Assembly may prescribe. That is very meaningful there. So now what's that, what that's saying is that that any other factor that Ohio General Assembly may prescribe means, hey, courts, we can just at any moment as the state legislature say that now you need to consider this when you're determining what bail is. What's bail? Bail determines whether or not you get to leave jail before you're actually tried for the crime that you have been accused of. Some of those crimes are violent crimes, but as we know, some of those crimes could be possession of a drug that was not violent, that didn't inv involve any other person. And so that's pretty meaningful that now we have the Ohio General Assembly telling a court what it can do. Okay, the second bullet here. This proposed amendment would also remove the requirement that the procedures for establishing the amount and conditions of bail be determined by the Supreme Court of Ohio. Right now, just like at the federal level, which we spend a lot more time in school learning about, here in Ohio, we have separation of powers. We have checks and balances. We have a judiciary, the Supreme Court. We have a legislature the Ohio General Assembly, and we have an executive, the governor. And this is saying that Supreme Court, which for all of this time has had the ability to set the terms and rules of bail because it is judges that are making these decisions about bail, so that makes sense, is no longer going to be able to have that power. That's a big deal. That's a very big deal. And in fact, what we just learned in that other bullet is that it's going to give a lot of discretion to the state legislature to decide what those standards are now going to be for bail. So looking at this, because again, it's an amendment to the Constitution, and it's amending this Section 9 of Article 1. So what does Article 1, Section 9 say? It says, all persons shall be bailable by sufficient sureties. There's a lot of language here, but I want to focus on one specific part. It says that except for a person who's charged with a capital offense. So meaning if you committed a really serious crime, like a capital offense, you cannot receive bail. Okay, so already some limitation on who can get bail. And except for a person who is charged with a felony where the proof is evident or the presumption is great and where the person poses a substantial risk of physical, serious physical harm to any person or to the community. Here's what that says to me. And of course, like I said at the beginning, you, you make your own interpretations of what we're reading and what we're hearing and what we're learning about, right? But to me, this says that there's a limitation on this power to set bail. And the limitation is that if somebody poses a serious risk to the community, if somebody seems like they might con commit serious physical harm to somebody, then they shouldn't be getting bail. And you know what that sounds a lot like to me? Public safety. So... After watching this, if you start to Google or look on TikTok, maybe if anybody's talking about issue one on TikTok, you, you'll start to see that a lot of times people are focused on, and especially a lot of the Republican 
state legislature that got, wanted to make sure this was on the ballot, that this is about protecting public safety, that this is about giving judges the power to think about public safety when they're setting bail and not giving into this bail reform movement. But what this is actually doing is reiterating a limitation that already exists. It already is the case that judges are not supposed to be setting bail when we think that somebody could pose a serious threat to the community, i.e. to public safety. What it actually is about is eroding the checks and balances of our state government. It is giving power to the General Assembly, to the state legislature, and away from the Supreme Court. But what they're going to talk about it as, what it's going to be framed as, you know, as we start to see more ads, is this public safety. Either you're for crime and rampant throughout our communities, or you're for public safety. That's what this ballot initiative is being posed as in all of the ads and all the media. So why now? And how did we get here? So it's interesting. This all started because there was a court case in Hamilton County, where Cincinnati is, where the sheriff was challenging uh, a reduction. Somebody was seeking a reduction to their bail, and the sheriff was saying that they didn't want that, right? And the court sided with the person who had been accused of the crime in that case saying, hey, you can't use bail to just keep people in jail. That's not the, the point of it. If it's excessive, then we need to be making adjustments based on what the crime has been. And that's what, what set into motion this entire effort by the state legislature to not have to deal with caring about what the people want or what their constituents want, but just deciding as that supermajority in the state legislature that, hey, we're going to do something about that. And we're going to do it right before the midterm elections to have a really great issue to distract people from what's actually going on. And what's actually going on right now in Ohio? That could very well be a whole other podcast, but I think a lot of us know that the top thing that people are thinking about now has a lot more to do with money, <laughs> how much everything costs, how hard it is to get around so many parts of our state. Yes, that we are concerned about safety, but it has very little to do with solving that problem by stripping away the powers of our judiciary and giving them to a general assembly that has already proven that they do not care about following the law. So pay attention. Issue one is a sleeping, <laughs> sneaky measure to make sure that our government does not work for us. And we need to make sure that everybody we know is aware that they should be voting against issue one. It does nothing helpful. And in fact, it's only reiterating a limit that already exists to bail, which is that judges are already taking into account any risk to public safety when determining what that bail level should be. Okay, so we also have this other issue, issue two. You've probably heard even less about this one because this one is also completely useless. It's not solving a real problem. And unfortunately, that's so much of what our politics has become about. Not solving problems, not serving the people, partisan, political, game and shit. And it's exactly why people don't care and they don't pay attention. So I totally understand when a lot of people say they hate politics. But anyway, again, could be a whole nother episode. So issue two, here's the real language. Secretary of State website, anybody can look this up, Google it, it's there. The official title to prohibit local government from allowing non-electors to vote. What does that mean? We're gonna dig into it. This was also proposed by our lovely General Assembly, not being responsive to the people, so that's fun. A majority yes vote necessary for the amendment to pass, same as issue one, and the proposed amendment would require that only a citizen of the United States who is at least 18 years old, 18 years of age, and who has been a legal resident and registered voter for at least 30 days can vote at any state or local election held in this state. It also says that it prohibits local governments from allowing a person to vote in local elections if they are not legally qualified to vote in state elections. So to put in another way, this, um, this issue, this proposed amendment to our constitution, this issue that went through our general assembly with a joint resolution is to make sure that people who are not citizens of the United States cannot vote. Does anybody know any citizens, any non-citizens here in the state of Ohio who are voting? Have you ever heard about a lot of people who have immigrated to Ohio and have not become citizens yet and they are just 
trying to sneak in and, and figure out a way to vote? I know that I haven't either. And so to me, it is already very clear that you have to be a citizen to vote. This proposed amendment to the Constitution, issue two, therefore is not necessary. And the other, and this is interesting because, I, I mean, I, I don't know if this was intended, but the other thing that it's saying is that you have to be at least 18 years old to vote. Now, what that is doing is right now, the law in Ohio is that if you are 17 years old, but you will be 18 years old by the general election, but if you're 17 years old during a primary, you can still participate in that primary election. What are primaries? That's when each party determines who their candidate is gonna be, and you can vote. But with this change to the law, that will no longer be true. So that is stripping away the ability of 17 year olds who will be 18 by the November elections that happen from voting. Younger people, on average, though not across the board, do tend to be more, uh, I would say with it, but uh, a little less friendly to perhaps our Republican state legislature agenda. And so that could be you know, another undetended cause here. But the main point is this isn't doing anything. Again, not solving problems, no point. But what are these two issues about? And I wanna take a moment to just step back here. Both of these issues touch on topics that the Republican Party is using right now across the country, here in Ohio, many other states that tend to get more attention about it to divide the public and distract them from our real issues. This is an immigration, issue two touches on immigration, trying to make people think that undocumented immigrants are taking over our country and government. And issue one is trying to make people, or specifically Democrats, prove that they are actually tough on crime, making people think that we don't have a justice system that is actually concerned about keeping the public safe. And so we've got to be real here. These are, not, these are not based on any substance. We need to be saying no to both of these issues, and we need to start electing people that at a minimum believe in democracy, believe in government, and then hopefully with the right amount of pressure, we'll do things that actually serve our community. So Morganizers, thank you so much for joining. This is all about getting to the heart of the issue. A lot of people would not talk about what we just talked about because they're scared that some Republicans gonna use it against them at some point. I don't care. The only thing I care about is us getting our shit together and being able to be protected and safe and thriving in our communities. And together, I know that we can. So vote, but more importantly, make sure you know what you're voting for. If you have any questions, please reach out to me and I will see you in our next episode.